I'll start uh, from the place of digital pathology and the work of the pathological forensics uh, medical doctor and the challenges related to that and prospects for way out into the future. Digital pathology. Everything started from the ability to digitize uh, the drugs uh, to have their uh, uh, slide image, uh, their digital copy. So oftentimes we have got multi-layered copy of the drug, which extends our ability to make it an analysis. It will be comparable to light spectroscopy, which we do routinely. And also it's possible to do machine analysis at very sophisticated level and implementation of artificial intelligence uh, AI, which is very popular in contemporary pathological anatomy, and lots of opportunities for remote consulting telepathologies, the formation of uh, remote educational and training courses and events. Uh, with a collection of slides uh, and we'll be able to assess quality in a remote way as well. Let's start from scanning. Scanning is rather sophisticated system as well. There are several approaches towards the capture of images. We'll dwell on it more de in more details later on. But there are other issues which evolve. Unfortunately, scanners or micro drugs are not identical to the uh, tablet scanners we use to copy documents. It's not what you can um, put uh, this paper into the tablet and you'll get everything identical, although uh, tablet scanners uh, can be attuned. Scanners or microdrugs are way more sophisticated and complex. They need fine tuning, fine tuning of the scanning parameters, uh, light perception, light transmission, and periodic calibration of those drugs and the ability to use those uh, images and to work with them is related to the engineering uh, uh, networks throughput capacity, uh, signal transmission velocity, which confines this use in many domains in our country, and storage of information. That's important as well. Mindful of international data. They are indicative of the fact that scanning uh, digitalized drugs at the end of the day uh, are uh, cheaper than uh, storage in uh, blocks and glasses. But it's not just where a storage of information uh, or whether it's terabyte or pentabyte storages. It's also about the way you arrange and manage the storage, how you arrange the access to those huge uh, assays of information it's about coping of information and uh, also backup system which uh, means that in order to have a small functioning of that when a technical personnel technical staff having all those skills and competence when it comes to technical maintenance or to an adjustment of scanners and organization of storage and transmission of data and the cases, of course, I'll mention patients as well because uh, we used to cherish very big hopes uh, related to implementation of scanners and remote consulting and remote analysis of drugs as well as in many other countries. But uh, before scanning, we encountered lots of problems like the absence of standardization of sampling uh, problems related uh, to the pre-analytic uh, stage. So those drugs which get into the scanner or may get into it don't have optimal quality, which uh, brings about artifacts of the drug and artifacts of the scanning, uh, which are overlapping in their aggravation, so it's not possible to scan the material in a good way. This is because the process of pro the processing of material and formation of conclusion is multi-stage. At pre-pre-analytical stage, we're dealing with lots of problems, and oftentimes uh, we don't keep track of all those pieces of information 
anymore. It's not standardized. It's the stage of referral and take and a primary fixation and transportation of material. Lots of problems at pre-analytical stage. There are no standards of processing, no standards of equipment and providing with chemical agents uh, uh, to those uh, labs which do the histological analysis. So uh, implementation of scanning cannot cope with all those problems at one go because they start long before it comes along. But at least now we unravel the problems related to the previous stages. It's necessary to put together some efforts to grapple with those problems. That's the way two slices from the same block can look like, and slides are different in size. Problem is that most of the current scanners available in the market have got very stringent uh, boundaries as to the linear parameters of the glass, which could be placed into scans and scanned. So unless we standardize this stage, and unfortunately we won't be able to get effective throughput capacity, and we won't be able to implement all those good capacities and opportunities which come along with SCAN, and they are plentiful. Or we would like to use them for telepathology, those SCAN microdrugs, apart from digital copy. There is a wide range of different in tools to annotate and measure the image to make some marks. Uh, it uh, just opens up great perspectives for future for different training and educational events and by the same token for remote assessment of a drug which could be in good control provided the right uh, glass parameters are available. Uh, we've made analysis of work on uh, telepathology uh, over the previous year. Up to two-thirds of cases is not possible to come up with defi definitive conclusion due to artifacts of pre-analytical staging, artifacts of scanning. So we should be very careful about it, not just from the standpoint of administration or regulator, but also uh, those who work in places. Uh, uh, we should do awareness raising about this problem. We should highlight in it. We should reconsider the ways we're doing those things because only standardization of sampling uh, and uh, good equipment and fabrication of micro uh, drugs will be able uh, to provide us with all those uh, spectacular uh, capacities digital uh, air brings us. And also it's about training personnel personnel and IT uh, sphere specialists as well. What, what's in it for us? I mean, all those digital story in practice has been implemented most proactively and uh, within the span of last two or three years in our unit, we're also most advanced in using this system and machine analysis as well. And later on the, uh, today in the morning, there will be a presentation related to application of assessment of uh, quantitative parameters, K66 index analysis for the example of uh, breast cancer or neuroendocrinal cancer because the threshold value of this, the cutoff value of this uh, it will change the therapy. That way we impact the destiny, the fate of the patient. We should be very impartial and very precise and unbiased in that. Uh, all those stories are coming along uh, hand in hand with AI, the discoveries in contemporary biology and medicine, development of immune therapy, shifted the focus of attention towards the tumor micro surrounding. Uh, environment. We would like to know what surrounds the tumor and how those surrounding tissues interact with tumor cells. What is the outcome of this interaction? But mindful of routine type of analysis, the way it's done oftentimes here, paraffin block is, uh, uh, there are just uh, uh, chips taken from paraffin block and there is massive analysis there and we end up with lots of problems. We're not able to analyze uh, DNA and RNA of proteins, of architectonics, 
his target donors tissue characteristics and also its uh, dilution of different mark markers, genetic markers, due to the additives of normal cells, uh, and which may this makes the signal very uh, weak or there is a lot of noise. So we won't be able to identify important signals. Uh, next stage, which we envisage to do, uh, is the harvesting of separate uh, cells, analysis of separate uh, tumor cells, microdissection could be useful. That this is another accomplishment of digital industry. But here, there we go again. It's an isolated analysis. Uh, those cells are sort of snatched out of their usual environment, well, missing the information about their morphology and interactions with those uh, uh, microenvironments surrounding those tumor cells. In situ analysis uh, is most informative and most promising mindful of the assessment of those interactions between different elements, different cells and components. And tumor infiltrating lymphocyte in the broad sense of this word, uh, not just lymphocytes, but other elements of the lymphoid row. The contemporary accomplishments allow us uh, to mark in situ molecular proteins, uh, nucleic acids and assess their localization within the cell and uh, on different cells uh, and in extracellular structures we may assess the distance between the cells, the interaction, the availability of ligand receptors in the adjacent cells. We use multiplexing and fluorescence as well. Uh, we studied distance between the cells, and there are some works and publications uh, indicating the clinical importance of that. I'll show you one of those. This is the work which was published several years back from now. It's dedicated to melanoma and carcinoma from Merkel cells because it's those uh, tumor cells which have good adaptive immune resistance to the impact of the organism system due to PDL1 hyperexpression, among other things. But data show that it's not about just PDL1 level expression level to CD cells or CD8 cell interest cell tumor infiltrate availability, but also also the difference between the two cells, the difference between the receptor and the ligand. How did we calculate that? Uh, we, the investigators made serious sliced uh, stained uh, by CD8, PD1, and PDL1. Then they were scanned, uh, and uh, they uh, received a summation um, imaging um, using a software. It delineated the margin of the uh, cell. CD8 and PD1 positive cells were calculated and assessed a different distance to the margin of the tumor. Uh, it would not be possible uh, without machine analysis and digital technologies. It would not have been possible to do that in the first place. This is virtual multiplex. That's how it's called. It can be implemented uh, on the different uh, masses. It's very interesting uh, methodology. Uh, serial slices from one block are stained by different dyes and uh, fluorescent of fluorescent if there are more than two stains. It's better to use flowers and dyes, then all those slides, uh, stains slides are scanned and there is program software overlapping of slices and we get summed up uh, image based on different uh, tracers and marks which are there in the slide. Vis-a-vis -vis true multiplex analysis one on for one slice several fluorogen or fluorescent tracers are placed then those multi polychromic slices are uh, scanned by different filters and we obtain this summed up uh, image. Both, both approaches have got their pros and cons, which is related to uh, multiple stages of processing and potential artifacts in the process of staining. Uh, and with overlap, uh, 
uh, and so on. But nonetheless, uh, it advances our analysis of interrelations between different elements in the tissue. And the scientists made one step forward even to see how effective this method is, include clinical practice. Uh, and they made a comparison of several markers uh, which are predictive in relation to indication of immune therapeutic drugs. Since we know that PDL1, besides the fact that it is actively and extensively used in clinical practice now as a predictor for immune oncological therapy, nevertheless, that is a test that is not a golden standard. And it has a lot of uh, drawbacks and very limited possibilities. A very, uh, there were very promising data concerning the level of mutational load, but they are also restricted. And thus, in this work, in this meta analysis, we compared the data of PDL expression by moon histochemistry. There were evaluations of mutation loads. Uh, the, assessment of the data of gene uh, expression, uh, profiling as well as the multiplex immune uh, 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 hist uh, histochemistry of fluorescence. We uh, also compared a multimodal approach uh, using several tests to assess the e efficacy of the therapy. That is the design of the study. The design covered more than 55 studies, 10 tumor types, and more than 8,000 patients. Thus, uh, there was a dis this distribution of the results of the studies. In the left uh, upper hand corner of the diagram, uh, there is an ideal test. The points that were closer uh, to uh, that uh, corner are closest to the ideal test that uh, predicts most uh, efficiently the sensitivity of the, the tumor to therapy. We uh, plotted rock uh, uh, curves and uh, 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 green curve is multiplex immune uh, histochemistry of fluorescence. And the left diagram doesn't take into account the volume of the sample, and the right diagram takes into account uh, the results of the study and the volume of the sample in each study, and the multiplex immune histochemistry is well ahead of all other methods, at least uh, of each of them separately. As to multimodal approach, a multimodal approach most frequently is a combination of the assessment of mutational load and PDL expression based on immune uh, histochemistry. There was also a combination with the expression analysis. Nevertheless, multiplex immune uh, histochemistry makes it possible to get results uh, on the date of meta-analysis. At least uh, they are more efficient than uh, the multimodal approach. It is clear that uh, such studies uh, uh, is uh, not uh, are not easily realized in routine practice without the possibilities of digital pathology and organ support that is. Uh, available that will be practically impossible without it so this is probably our future and uh, quite often in the context of such intense development of the technology there is a question particularly for the experts for young specialists who just have to make the choice of the specialty to proceed with in medicine whether in five or ten years the technologies or artificial intelligence will replace uh, the experts representatives of this particular profession. And I like very much this diagram, which divided all the medical specialties, or at least many of them, depending on the risk of this uh, specialty uh, to be replaced by a certain technology to a certain uh, degree. Horizontally, along the horizontal axis, that is the extreme point of the spectrum to the left. You can see the degree of repeatability of the actions. To what extent the work is a set of repeated actions, and they are repeated on a daily basis. The other extreme point of the spectrum is the degree of creativity, the frequency of some new, unforeseen, unpredictable situations in daily work. And Along this axis, the pathology or pathological anatomy is a very creative specialty. 
and each day something new uh, appears in respect of the information and the individual experience because despite the fact that many tumors are similar to each other, none of them is similar to anything else and each patient uh, has its own lesion with its own specific features. Uh, in uh, some cases these are quite different features. There is a very uh, large set of uh, rare uh, tumors and lesions. Their classification is being expanded. They are supplemented by new nosological units so that have both morphological and phenotypical features that are different from those that are well described now. Along the vertical axis, there are specialties in the lower part of the spectrum based on data analysis, and the pathologies, such a specialty that is based on data analysis, uh, received data received from the patient and on the analysis of morphological data. And this work is impossible without analyzing clinical data, data of instrumental methods of investigation. So that is a highly analytical data-based specialty that is really in that part of the spectrum. Another extreme part of the spectrum are the specialties uh, that are communicative. They involve the necessity of contacting a patient, communicating the patient's and you can see that the risk uh, that the technologies will replace the pathology is not so great, but uh, it is quite clear that these achievements and these technologies will become a part of our everyday life. For instance, uh, as uh, multiplex analysis, because the pathologists will have to choose the tissue, the organ, the pathological process, the set of traces, and then using the achievements of digital analysis to analyze the results obtained. Probably that is a very good definition of uh, our future, and that means that we have to try and develop along this trend, uh, investigate the possibilities of the systems that are currently available and uh, how they evolve and how we can use them in our daily practice, how they can help us. But we shouldn't forget that this uh, is a product of human work. And there might be some restrictions and limitations, and really they have some limitations. And during that session, we are trying uh, not only to discuss the advantages given by the technologies, but their weak points and how they can should be accounted for in our future work. Thank you very much for your attention.